Well, uh, last uh, couple of weeks we've been talking, well, she ta- last week she talked about worship, John chapter 4. We're talking about prayer today, and prayer is in the Bible. We're going to talk about that. And, but I began to think how much, not just in the Bible, but how much society talks about prayer. You know, you, you hear people that are believers or not believers, they, they talk about prayer. And, they, 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 and I started thinking about songs about prayer, not, not Christian songs per se, but just secular songs, songs that uh, just want to enjoy or, or mention the word prayer. And I thought, well, I'll talk about, just show a few. And this, a couple of these are old school. So if you're under 35, you probably won't even know these people, but uh, you can Google them if you'd like to after. But the first song that come to my mind today about prayer, I think if it can pop up there is uh, <laughs> MC Hammer. Does anybody remember, uh, please tell me I'm not the only, thank you, Curtis. God bless you. I am, I'm not the only person here. And this song about, he songs about pray. I'm not going to sing. That's not going to happen. I almost did, which is weird. That I almost broke out in song. But this song was when I was younger. Won't tell you how old. But this one impacted me, and I was like, "Yeah, you know." And you would get along, and, and you know, you can't touch this. Was his main song? Maybe you know that song. But it was about prayer. And the next one, this one didn't really impact me, but I thought the next one is Justin Bieber talking about Canadian reference. So uh, talking about pray, and it's a big song, and it just kind of goes over. But this last group really, really. If you're over 35, you're really going to understand them. It's Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer. Anybody know that song? You're, you're what? You're halfway there? <laughs> yeah, the, and the hair. How can we not forget the hair and that? But you can Google rock songs about prayer, and there is a ton of them. Just songs about praying. People that may not have any belief in Christ, but they believe in prayer. And I thought, how much better for us as a church is that we have the one who will answer prayer in our lives. And, and, and they all sing, and, and nothing wrong, you know, like that group. I don't judge their faith. I don't know if they're believers or not. But when we think about it in our lives, it's just kind of all over the culture about prayer. And if you ask the majority of people, a person, a Christian or not, I'd say there's times where they pray. And, and it's situations in their lives. So it's not about us not praying. It's about us praying and praying in the way that God's asked us to, to kind of lead us in and to be in prayer like that. But we're going to talk about for the next few moments. I can leave that picture up all day if you want to look at it, just to glorify. And I think some of you probably had that hair, so I need to see your pictures uh, like that later on. But we're going to go on and talk about prayers in the prison, the prison prayer. And the apostle Peter. And in Acts chapter 12, you see the story of of what's happening. Just a little context about it here is that at this time, the church was growing and and it was booming at the time and it was becoming real. But uh, there was a lot of uh, persecution, a lot of pushback. And just for the context is what happened here is in Acts chapter 12 at this time, King Herod Agrippa was the king at the time. He was the grandson of the king who ordered all male children under two to be murdered. In Matthew 2, just to give you context of that, this is when Jesus was born and the the wise men came and and King Herod also was his name. He uh, found out that there was a Messiah born. And so to make sure this Messiah did not rise to his throne, he sent soldiers to the Bethlehem and had all the male children under that. So not, not a great family. Not, not a really good history of people you want to be around. A very violent, very uh, angry, mean king was King Herod. And he had several believers arrested, who among those was the Apostle James. And, and he had him arrested, and then he had him beheaded. And, and King Herod saw this, and it made a lot of the religious Jew culture, the Pharisees, happy, actually. Because they were promoting Jesus, and the Pharisees did not want that. Why, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but one, it was mean they're going to lose their power. So they wanted these disciples done away with. And King Herod saw it, and he had, so then he arrested Peter and brought him into jail. And his plan was to behead him. So that's where we pick it up in in chapter 12 of the Bible here in Acts chapter 12. So just read right here in Acts chapter 12, verse 5, it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him earnestly praying to God. Peter had been arrested. This was actually not his first time. And, and he was put in cast in prison. And, and he had soldiers. They would chain soldiers to the prisoner. So he had two men chained to him. 
and then two more watching a door around the clock. They had different shifts. So every time they'd change shifts, one would unchain themselves, bring in some more. So they were not letting him out this time. The first time he got out supernaturally the first time, and they were like, you're not getting out this time. So it was a dangerous time for the church, but the church began to pray, the Bible says. It began to pray. And you can't really get more helpless. You, you, there was nothing they could do. They couldn't fight the Roman government. They couldn't fight the Roman soldiers if they wanted to because they were too powerful. And the church could have felt helpless at the time. A leader of the church, I, I'm talking about Peter was there on the day of Pentecost like it was a big deal. He was an important person in the church. And they just saw one of the other apostles beheaded or they found out about it and then they figured that's it. But the church began to pray earnestly. The Bible, uh, King James says, constant. They gathered together and begin to pray. And when we are in heavy trials, it, it's good to have someone praying for us. There's going to be times in our lives when we're in situations where it's hard for us to pray. There's going to be times where we just can't seem to, to bring it to ourselves to pray. We're under such pressure, such a situation. Peter was laying in a prison cell chained to two men. Now he could have been praying, but the Bible doesn't record that. It says the church began to pray for him. That's why it's so important, church, for us to pray for each other. It's called intercessional prayer. It's called that, and it's the definition in the left corner here is the action of intervening on behalf of another. Intercession or intercessional prayer is the act of praying to God on the behalf of others. This goes deeper than just saying, I'll pray for you, and then, and then we, we mention a prayer, then we go on and not again. It's actually kind of taking in that place where you're stepping in for that person, and you're praying earnestly, constantly for them. I had a grandmother that this was her. She was intercessor of prayer. She prayed for us all the time, nonstop, just day after day after day. And now, before her, there was no, we had no ministers in the family. We had no one. After her, we have close to 15 to 20. And, man, you, you can just go back to her. The matriarch was in the south called Mamaw. I'm going to say Mamaw. <laughs> Mamaw was a person who prayed and interceded, who stepped in behalf of that. And I know as parents, you pray for your children as those things and those situations, but it's also can be in the moment when something traumatic happens for someone's life. And we begin to, someone is sick, someone is unable to, to uh, get through it, then that's where intercessory prayer steps in. It's we step into that place and pray for them. We take it to the next level. Now the Bible talks about the gifts and, uh, and I think we all can do this, but there's some people that are just super gifted in this. My sister is one. She is just gifted in an accessible prayer, and, and, and it's great to have those people around us. But we all can, to some point and some steps, step into that as a corporate body. So this is what's happening. Peter could sleep, the Bible records him, sleeping between these two soldiers because he knew the church was praying. Sure, he was exhausted. Sure, he'd been through a lot. But he's chained on, a, on a, probably a concrete or dirt floor between two large men that want to kill him. And he's asleep because of that intercessional prayer, because of that church praying for him. And, and, and we're in society now. Life is so busy for all of us. And it's so constant going. But if we can begin to not only be in prayer, but step into that intercessional prayer for each other, for this community, man, that's when, that's when things really can begin to happen. But when we do that, what's going to happen is the enemy is going to come against that. He's going to fight hard against that because he knows that's the key to Jesus being glorified, to Jesus coming out. So he's going to push hard. He's going to come against that with all he can do. And, and we see in Romans 8 verse 34, it says, when then is, there's no one who condemns us, no one, but Christ Jesus who died. More than that, he was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Jesus is in heaven right now, stepping into that place. He stepped into our place and he died for us. He took on our sins. Those of us who asked Jesus to come into our heart, Jesus has taken that. He stepped in that place. Now he's in heaven, stepping in, interceding for you and I. You're like, I'm alone, Mike. And no, Jesus, the Bible says, is in heaven, interceding for you. 
I don't know about you, but I'm glad he's on my side. And he is stepping into that place for us. Church, we've got to believe that. We've got to believe it. No, Mike, it's for other people. No, it's for you today. That's how much Jesus cared. That he is not just saying a quick prayer and just kind of doing something else. He's interceding for us. He's pressing through. He's going to the next place. And as we grow as a church, as we grow in what God calls us to do, I think a key foundation for us at Delta, and, and I'm sure there's some of you already here, but it's really building that foundation of intercessional prayer. If that's a gift of yours or that's a passion of yours, please email me. Please talk to me because we want to connect with you and begin to build that in our lives. But we also go on out after uh, looking out now, Peter, the church is praying. We're looking at verses 6 through 11. I won't read those. But we see the supernatural take place. So the church begins to pray. Peter's asleep. And God sends an angel, and he walks in, opens the door, and just kind of goes to him. And one of my favorite things is he kicks Peter, because Peter's still asleep. Kicks him. I love the Bible. And, and he, he kicks him, and Peter awakes, and he's like, you know how it is. You just can't see, oh, there's a large glowing person, you know, around me. And he's just kind of like shocked, and, and the chains fall off, and they just walk out of the prison. And Peter's thinking, man, this is a great dream. I'm having a great dream right now. The Bible says he was a little bit confused. But then he walks out and, and then he realizes that, boom, I'm free. And the angel leaves. I, I think in North America we're not used to or we don't fully see the supernatural a lot. Because we've got things that are, I'm not going to say it's perfect, but we're doing pretty good in North America. But God is still the God of the supernatural. God can still do some amazing things. It's believing and praying for those things. It's believing God. So we'll look at Acts chapter 12 or, and then verses 12 through 16. So now Peter's free. He's out of prison. He's gone. And, and I'll read this for you here. It should be up on the screen. Yeah. When this has dawned in him, he went to the house. He realizes he's free of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance and a servant named Rhoda came to the answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without even opening the door and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. Now, this is us, church. This is how we are. They go, you're out of your mind. You are crazy, they told her. When she kept insisting, they're like, okay, we'll go check. It must be his angel because it can't be Peter because we've been praying for him. <laughs> but Peter kept knocking on the door. Like I said, I love the Bible. Peter, he just kept knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They were amazed. Favorite part is she didn't even open the door. She's so excited. She just said, hey, our prayers are answered. And Peter's just doing this, just beating on the door. Let me, let me in. And I want to just dwell just for the next few moments on praying, but then having faith that God will answer. And, and they're, they're, they were praying earnestly, passionately, and God answers their prayer. They're like, no, that can't be it. That can't be what he's done. Because sometimes when we pray and we ask God to do things, we kind of have an idea of how it will work. But then God just goes and does his thing. And then we're like, oh, no, it can't be that. They, they prayed, but then it's, it's for all of us this morning, I'm, I'm praying as you pray, start believing that God will. And be prepared for an answer that you weren't prepared for. <laughs> be prepared for an answer that you weren't prepared for. Because God will do things in an amazing, amazing way. And he will do things because he loves us, church. And he died for us. And he wants us to have communion and connection with him. And it's through prayer. They were praying, but they were shocked that God answered. They were completely taken back that God actually did it. And that's my prayer for some of you today, is that you're going to be shocked that God has moved in your life. That's my prayer for you. But as I begin to think about this and begin to think about the prison and, and think about uh, Christians being persecuted, it just kind of become on my heart for those uh, around the world that aren't as lucky as us in North America, that we can gather freely and not be arrested for our faith or not be persecuted for our faith. So I began to just kind of Google and look at some statistics and, and just think about the persecuted church. And it says that some of the statistics, excuse me, are there's over 300 million people facing persecution daily in the world. 
statistics here is 13 Christians worldwide are killed because of their faith. 12 churches or Christian buildings are attacked. 12 Christians are unjustly arrested or imprisoned. This is an average statistic. Another five are abducted. And the numbers are growing. According to the Open Door Annual World Watch List, one in eight Christians worldwide experience high level of persecution. And I thank God that we have the freedom here. Don't you, church? I thank God for that freedom. That those of us who choose to follow Christ can meet without the fear of someone coming in, not only arresting us, but taking our life. We have that of beauty in North America. But in return, may God give us a passion and desire to pray for those who don't have faith. And as believers in Christ, there are brothers and sisters around the world that are facing that. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about, thanks, Maggie, you can tell me that, but how do I pray? And I just gave a list up here, and they gave us a list of some of the prayer things. First, we can pray that persecuted Christians would have access to a Bible. They don't even have that in a lot of places. We can pray for access to food and shelter. As believers, they're, they're not allowed to have that. Pray that God would give persecuted Christians the right words to say. Pray that they would have opportunities to gather and that God would supply their needs for a community. We can pray to God to be an advocate for women who are socially vulnerable and have lost custody of their children because of their faith. Pray for courage for those that remain in their homeland. Pray for comfort and hope for those that have been separated from each other and pray for the imprisoned. And I kind of, at the end there, they had a prayer for the, those in prison. And it says, God, you're near to the lonely and those being imprisoned for their faith. Thank you for their strength and their courage. As Peter knew, may they know they're desperate, that despite their current reality, you are using all things to advance your kingdom. You are leading them into an inheritance that will never spoil of faith. Lord, have mercy. Give them courage to remain faithful to you and be ever-present in times of trouble. So this morning, I'm going to ask if, if Amber can come back up, and they're going to lead us in a song. And, and you can stay seated this morning, but I, I know in your life there might be a lot going on, and I, and I acknowledge that this morning. But can we just take a few moments just to silently pray for those around the world that they're that battling things? You can stay seated and just take a moment and and if we could go back to the list of things to pray for. Thanks, Gabe. Yeah, if you could just go back there. You're like, what do I pray? Maybe pray one of these things. But we're just going to go for the song as they that. And you can just close your eyes. And, 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 I, and I believe in God as we prayed earlier that God would move in your life. Let's pray for those believers around us today. And then after this song, we'll be dismissed. But we could just take a few moments.
we just uh, come before you right now and just thank you, God, for, for you in our lives. We just lift up those around the world right now who are Lord, facing wars, God, facing just famines, facing so much. Lord, we just pray peace, God, and hope in their lives, Lord. We just ask that, Lord, you would send your presence down, God, and comfort them, protect them, provide those practical, basic needs, God, for their lives. We just ask grace, Lord, that you would do that. Father, we just pray for each and every one of us as we go about this week, God, that you would, uh, we would walk in the plan you have for us, we would have joy and hope knowing that, God, you are interceding, you are standing for us, believing, God, you're cheering us on. Lord, we just thank you this day, it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Thanks for coming, I know this is kind of a heavy thing, so can you smile at me a little bit, you know, it's a, yeah, there we go. Thank you, thank you. We just, some of us, maybe it's new and this is all big and heavy and like that, but just realizing that God loves us, God has a plan for us, and He wants to be on your side today. So I pray you have a great week this week. You walk in that confidence, God is on your side. So thanks again for coming out, church. You are dismissed.